Hi, this is Kira, and I'm with Anchorage Yoga Cycle today. I'm going to be leading us through a short, about 20, 25 minute prenatal yoga class. So today during class, you'll need some blocks, but if you don't have blocks, feel free to just use um, some books. I tried this last night and it should be just fine. So a stack of books that would kind of replicate how tall the blocks are. And then I'd like you to have something to sit on. Maybe it's a pillow from your couch or a pillow from your bed. And so that's how we're gonna start today is sitting. And I would like your hips to be higher than your knees. And so a blanket or a pillow, whatever you can find to help those hips rise above the knees. And then at the end for Shavasana, it's nice to have a blanket to go under the head in between the legs. And that could also be a pillow in between the legs um, or under the head. And then like a little blanket to cuddle your arms around. So you're welcome to pause this, gather those things, and then come meet me back in a sitting position. So great, today let's go ahead and get started by gently closing our eyes in this sitting position. We're sitting up nice and tall. Hands can be on the thighs, they can be cupped in the lap or if you'd like you can have the hands on the thighs with the palms facing up and the index finger and thumb connected in chin mudra so wherever you put your hands just feel nice and comfortable and then sit up nice and tall so you're lengthening from the tailbone all the way up the spine into the back of the head and then we give a slight tuck of the chin so that the spine remains nice and long. Shoulders are down and back, maybe just a slight lift of the sternum. And then we check in with the hips. The hips are not pushed too far forward or too far back. They're just nice and even as if our pelvis was a bowl. Beautiful, so sitting up nice and tall, we'll just find our breath. And today we're going to start with a heart breath. So we're going to exhale completely and then we're going to breathe into the front of the heart for a count of five, four, three, two, one. And then exhale through the back of your heart for the count of five. Inhale through the back of the heart for five. Exhale through the front of the heart for a count of five. Inhale through the left side of the heart for a count of five. Exhale through the right side of the heart for a count of five. Inhale through the right side of the heart for a count of five. Exhale through the left side of the heart. Inhale through the top of the heart. Exhale through the bottom of the heart. Inhale through the bottom of the heart. Exhale through the top of the heart. Just finding that nice natural breath in and out through the nose. Bring the palms together, the thumbs come into the heart center, and just gently bow the head. Bowing to the teacher inside yourself, bowing to the inner intuition, your inner mother, your inner knowing. Place the right hand on the heart, the left hand on your belly, and we'll do just a little bit of loving kindness meditation. Silently repeating inside of yourself, may I be happy. May my baby be happy. May all beings be happy. May I be peaceful. May my baby be peaceful. May all beings be peaceful. May I be healthy. 
May my baby be healthy. May all beings be healthy. Gently release the hands and open the eyes. Great, so we're going to release the blankets or pillows that we were sitting on. And we can set those off to the side. So we're going to sit down and slide the hips back, bring the soles of the feet together into our butterfly position, Baddha Konasana. And the feet are about a foot, foot and a half in front of us, but you know, really wherever you find most comfortable. We're gonna bring the hands along the shins and sit up nice and tall, pulling on the shins. And here we're gonna come into just some spinal flexes, warming up the spine. As we inhale, we open the chest, maybe opening the neck as long as that works for you. And as you exhale, rolling through the spine, bringing the chin in towards the chest, and then moving with your own breath. Inhale, opening up, and exhale, moving through. Beautiful. Just really connecting with the flow of the breath as we move through one more time. Inhaling, open. Exhale, arching back. Good. Finding a neutral spine, let's extend the right leg out, bring the left foot in towards the body. I like to be on the mat this way so that the heel can stay on the mat and get some kind of cushion there. Good. From here, we're going to open up to the left. It's a really gentle twist. With pregnancy, we never want the navel to go beyond the leg. And we're, we're not coming anywhere near that. We're really just giving a slight open to the left. And then we're going to bring the left arm back behind us along the waistline as if we were reaching towards this thigh, but certainly we're not making it there. And then we're going to slide the right hand along the inner calf as we start to open up towards the right. Good. Just watching that the neck isn't drooping down. The neck is really nice and up. The hand can slide anywhere along the leg. Maybe it likes the top of the shin. Maybe it likes the side of the calf or the ankle. And then as you're ready, find that breath. Inhale, the left arm reaches up and we reach over, getting a nice side stretch, getting a nice stretch along the ligaments, which really helps with any ligament pain while pregnant. Reaching and breathing. And again, checking maybe the ear is reaching up towards the bicep, keeping the neck in line with the spine. And then exhale, release up and over. And we'll switch to the other side. So moving the left foot over, the right foot in. Sitting up nice and tall. You want, might want to bring the flesh out from the sitting bones. And as you're ready, right arm comes behind, slight twist towards the right and slide over to the left. Good, breathing. Now you can stay here with the arm or if you like, you can reach the right arm up nice and carefully, inhaling, flowing gently. And then we're reaching over, getting that side stretch along the side body, letting that ear connect with the bicep or at least reaching towards there and then breathe. And it's up to you whether your eyes are open or closed. If you close your eyes, just make sure that helps you stay more focused and not get lost. Good, inhale up and exhale slowly coming down. Good, so from here, let's go ahead and come on to hands and knees position. I really like to have some sort of blanket underneath my knees. If you're at home and you are already on a carpet or something, you might not need this. But I'm going to put a blanket underneath my knees. Good, so we come into our hands and knees position. Back toes are tucked, hands are underneath the shoulders. 
Fingers are spread wide, not so wide that you're like ripping these hands fingers apart, but there's space between the fingers. The middle finger is pointed forward. Good. Hips are on top of the knees or knees underneath the hips. Good. So we, this is our foundation. And then the lastly, the last thing I'd like you to look at is how the eyes of the elbows spin. Let those eyes of the elbows face each other. And that brings the weight onto these first three fingers and takes any extra stress off the outer wrist. Beautiful. From here, we take a deep inhale, and then as we exhale, we uh, reach the back up, up, up to the sky. Inhale, tilt the pelvis, drop the belly, and look up. Good. And exhale, arching all the way up. Now here, as we exhale, or excuse me, inhale and drop the belly, Try to just go 75% and this protects the low back. So we're not really dropping as far as we can. Good. Moving through with your own breath. Exhale here on our cat. Inhale on the cow. Going just not as far as we can, about 75%. And moving through like a wave, moving through the spine initiated by the tailbone, moving through the low back, mid back, upper back. This is such a good posture while pregnant. So I want you to keep going and I'm going to talk for a moment. So this helps baby kind of swoop down, especially as baby gets bigger in later pregnancy. And it helps the spine to come either towards the front or their spine towards the left. And this is the way baby's going to spin out when they are born. So any of these postures that puts our belly swinging down helps baby come into the proper position to be born without back labor, which is great. Good. Bring that movement to a close. Let's extend the right leg out from our body. Just check that the right leg is in line with the hip. We don't want the leg back here or way up here. It's right in line with the body, extended out from the hip, grounding down through this outer edge of the foot, feeling the whole foot down onto the ground. Hands are still underneath the shoulders. Same position as before. Find your breath, deep inhale, lift that right arm up. Arms are stacked. Now, the gaze, you don't have to gaze up. I much prefer to gaze to the horizon or even down to find some more grounded feelings. Good, one more breath, reach up, up, up. Exhale, release down, hand comes underneath the shoulder. Slide the right foot back. I'm gonna move forward a little bit so I can be on my mat. And let the right leg be straight. Let the toes of the right foot really be firm into the mat and push the heel back so that you get a nice stretch along the back of the leg. This is a great posture to do right before bed if you ever experience muscle cramps in the back of the leg. Good, reach, reach, reach with the heel. If you'd like, you can bring the right leg up. Just make sure at this position, your hips are square. We're not lifting the hips, hips are square. And then from here, if you'd like, you bring the left hand forward, palm facing in. If that's too much, bring it down. And then one last adjustment here. Make sure the belly's not dropped. You want a slight tuck of the hips here. Reach, reach, reach. And exhale, release down. Nice. So from here, let's circle the hips. So circle the hips in one direction. And circling the hips in the other direction. And as you're ready, bringing that movement to a close and extend the left leg out for the other side. Beautiful. So finding that foundation as you're ready, left arm lifts up on the inhale. Reach, 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 breathe. Grounding through the foot, reaching through the fingertips. Exhale, release that left arm down. Now we're going to extend the left leg back behind you. 
Good. Pushing down through the toes of the left foot, pushing the heel back, reach, and reaching with that heel to the wall behind you. <clears throat> As you're ready, if you like, bring the left leg up, reach the right arm forward, reach the fingertips forward and feel the line of energy from the fingertips through the back heel. Slight tuck of the pelvis so that the belly's not drooping down. One more breath. Flex the back foot. Breathe and exhale, release. Great. From here, let's go ahead and bring the knees wide and come into our first child's pose. Good. The knees are wide <clears throat> and the arms come forward. There's some options here. You could use your fist if your forehead doesn't make it down. If you have a block or some books, you could always put those here. But you know, we're not going to be here too long, so find something that works easily for you to come into child's pose. And take just two breaths here. Beautiful, slowly coming up and out of child's pose. And we're going to now use our blocks. And if you have books, like I said, that's fine. We're gonna be putting a downward pressure on the blocks or books. And so it's not going to be a sliding um, motion. It's going to be a downward pressure. So finding those blocks or books, putting both of the hands on there on the outer edges of the mat. And then when you're ready, bringing the right foot forward. If you need to, you can always give it a little help forward. So let's work on our foundation here. Front knee is on top of the front ankle of this right leg. And the back knee, well, it may be way forward here. What I don't want is it to be right underneath the hip. It should be a little bit back and if possible, even a little more back. However far back is feels comfortable. But with pregnancy, we want to be careful with the hormone relaxin running through the body, never pushing too far into a posture so that we don't destabilize the joints. Good. So what I generally say is take it to your max and then back off a little. So if this was my max, I might just lift my knees forward just a little bit so that I don't overstretch my joint. Great. So here we are. We found our nice foundation. The back toes can be pointed or tucked. When they're tucked, it gives us a little more stability. And so from here, we sit up nice and tall on our blocks. If you're using books, just make sure you're using that downward pressure and not a forward pressure that might slide them. And lastly, I'd like one last really small adjustment here. It's the scissoring motion of bringing the hips slightly together. You, can't, you can almost see it. My hips are almost dumping here. And then I'm gonna give them just a little pull in together so that I'm fortifying from my core and not just dumping into my pelvic floor. Good, so we're gonna take three long deep breaths here. And if you needed to make more space for your baby, your beautiful baby belly, you could always move that block, left block out more and open up that space for baby belly. One more deep breath. Good, so from here, I'm going to have you tuck your back toes and bring them forward an inch or two. Tuck the back toes. Straighten the back leg. Now, if you're starting to step on your blanket, you might want to move it forward a little bit. Straighten the back leg, pivot the back foot, and then we're going to bring the right hand, left hand to the hip, right forearm to the right thigh, and then just slowly roll up. I'm going to switch positions just so I can be facing you. Good, slowly rolling up straight in the front leg. And we're gonna get ready for warrior two position, Virabhadrasana two. So the he front heel is in line with the back foot, just about like a T. You might bring that heel a little bit closer toward your other heel. So it's almost heel to heel, almost like a T, right in between there. A nice wide stance. 
And as you're ready, bring the front knee on top of the front ankle. Inhale the arms up. And gaze over the front fingertips. This posture is great for opening the hips. Really good for building strength in the legs. So all good things for pregnancy. You can engage the back kneecap by lifting it up or the engaging the quadriceps by lifting the kneecap. And the hips, we don't want them to push out. It's a slight tuck of the pelvis here. Good, one more breath, breathe. Straighten the front leg and then re-bending it, just giving it a little break there. We're gonna bring the left hand onto the left side, reach the right arm up, palm faces up, and we come into our exalted warrior. The left hand slides down the leg, the gaze comes up. What I like to do is bring the hand into the, onto the back of the head, maybe cradling this like back of the neck area, the back of the skull. The left right arm is reaching up toward the sky with the elbow pointing up. And then we're coming into our exalted warrior. You might be tired now, one more breath. And then inhale, come on up. We bring both hands back down to the ground, pivot the back foot back, and then bring the left knee down. Bring the right knee back to meet the left. Bring the knees wide and coming down into child's pose for three breaths. So this is a real strength giving pose, the child's pose, Balasana. So let it generate strength in your body as you rest and breathe. Let that breath be active. Deep inhales, long exhales, a full yogic breath throughout the class, in and out through the nose. Inhale, slowly coming up. And as you're ready, both hands onto the blocks. Bring the left foot forward in between the blocks. And then slide the right leg back as is comfortable for you. And we find our foundation here in our lunge pose. Good, so again, just finding what works best for you. Front knee on top of the front ankle. Slightly bring the hips together. And just not slouching through the shoulders, making sure you're opening through the chest. Your gaze can be down, it can be forward. Your eyes can be closed. They can be open. As long as you're just finding the breath. Finding this present moment without any worries of the past or the future. You're just right here in your body with your baby. Stretching the hips. One more breath. Beautiful. Tuck the back toes. Bring the front knee forward, or excuse me, the back knee forward and enter two. Pivot at, well, excuse me, let's start. Straighten the back leg, straighten the front leg. Pivot the back heel in. Nice and slow here. Right hand to right hip. Slowly bringing the forearm to the thigh and maybe the hand to the thigh as you roll up. Nice and slow. Good, finding alignment through the feet. Finding some real grounding energy through the feet. Maybe, maybe even finding a breath where you inhale and then exhale through the feet. Nice and solid, grounded, especially through these tough times that have been going, through, going on. It's uh, nice to have a real grounding sense in our practice. Good, front knee comes over the front ankle. I can feel that's too wide for me. So what I would do is walk my back foot forward a little bit and then I find that front knee on top of the front ankle. Inhale the arms up, gazing over the left fingertips. Giving a slight tuck of that pelvis so that I'm not sticking my bum out. Engaging the back uh, leg by bringing the kneecap up. Engaging this quadriceps. 
and breathing. We gaze over those front fingertips, but really it's a gaze within. Good, straighten the front leg, bring the left palm towards the ceiling, right hand along the right leg. Again, bend that front knee, reverse warrior or exalted warrior. You could be here, you could bring the hand behind the head, finding what works for you. Maybe this doesn't work at all for you and you're back in child's pose and that's okay too. But really feel yourself here with all of our Yoga Mama community. We miss you here in the studio and we can't wait to have you back but we're still together in our heart. Good, inhale up, release. And we're going to pivot back down to the ground. Hands come onto the blocks. Now, if you do have blocks, those blocks could have always come up to a higher level, but I know that's hard if we're at home with, with uh, books, but that gives us a little more height to then come down to a little higher. Pivot the heel up. Knee comes back down to the ground. Left knee meets the right. And bring these blocks back down. And then you can bring the blocks or the books off the mat. And one more child's pose. Knees come wide, toes together, reach the arms forward. One more breath. Walking the hands up. Good, so from here we're going to do one posture on our back and then we're going to come into Shavasana. So maybe have the items you will need for Shavasana on hand. What I would do is have a blanket or, or a pillow. So I'm making this blanket into a pillow, but you're at home so you probably have a pillow. So I would have that towards the front of my mat. I'm gonna make my front here because I'm gonna be on my left side facing you all. I'll have a blanket or a bolster for um, in between my legs. I'm gonna leave it undone for now so you can see me better. And then I'll also have one that I can kind of snuggle in my arms. And I'm going to put that one up here. Good, so these could all be pillows, they could all be blankets, whatever works best for you. So I'd like you to gingerly come onto your side. And it's really important that we don't just plop down while pregnant. We wanna protect all these abdominal muscles. So we slowly come down onto our side. Good, gently roll onto our back. Now I know we can't be on our back for too long because of the vena cava syndrome. We don't want to invoke. So that's the, the big vein that we don't want to put pressure on that can then take some um, nutrition, not nutrition, but um, supplements to the baby. So nutrition, nutrients, that's the word to the baby. So we can be here for five minutes safely, but we'll just be here for a minute or two. Good. So let's remove that a little bit. Great. So we're here on our back. The feet are about hip width apart. They're in towards the bottom. You may reach your fingers down and feel your heels. Good. From here, the hands come flat down onto the ground. And as you inhale, you lift your hips up. And then as you exhale, you roll through the spine and bring them back down. Good, inhale, lift the hips up. Bridge pose, Setu Bandhasana, and exhale, bring the hips back down. And one more time, inhale, really nice and slow, feel vertebra by vertebra, lift the hips up, and then we hold. And you may know, or you may not, but in my class, I often have us put a block under here for this time of holding, but we can just hold too. But this is an inversion. So the baby, if, you know, baby's head down, um, 
it has a chance to come up and out of the pelvis for just a little while, and especially later in pregnancy, you want baby to come up and out of that pelvis just for a little while so that head doesn't get stuck in one position or there's an arm there. So these little inversions are really nice for baby to have just a little break from getting constantly squished in that downward motion to the pelvis. Good, one more breath, up, 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 and then exhale, come down. Of course, if I'm ever keeping you in a posture too long, please feel free to just come on out of it when you're ready. Really nice work, everybody. Go ahead and slide your hips to the right, roll to the left. So again, there is a reason we're on our left side, and that's so the baby's spine can um, drift towards the left, and we talked about that optimal place for baby's spine to be so that they can be born without a back labor, nice, a much easier labor. Good, so using your blanket or your pillow under your head, knees are bent, and you can use a blanket or a bolster, ideally um, it's all the way down to your feet to give your ankles some cushion as well, so that the hips are in line with the knees. And then lastly, I usually have my left arm up here. I like to bring a little blanket in that I can let my right arm snuggle up to. Ideally, it would kind of be in line with my shoulder, but this is fine too. So finding your Shavasana. Ideally, we would stay here for 10 minutes. Sometimes I might like to do a nice little meditation here. But for the sake of our class today, I'm just gonna have us stay here for about three minutes. I'd like you to stay here and close your eyes. If you were to look at the screen, you can see that I'm, I'm gonna sit up and talk. Stay in your Shavasana. So here in Shavasana, we let go of any active breath. The breath is just our in and out of our passive breath. Whatever the breath wants to naturally be. And the mind is still focused on the present moment. That might mean feeling the sensations of the body Feeling the air against the skin, feeling of the cushions in between your legs, any sounds, but just observing those without judgment. They're not good or bad, they're just there. We're just noting, noting the present moment. And then just coming back to the breath, feeling the breath coming in and out of the nostrils. Feeling the breath gingerly coming into the abdomen. Maybe it really doesn't have a lot of places to go because baby's pressing against the diaphragm. And that's okay, just observing. And then taking a moment to just deeply relax. From the top of the head, the tips of the toes, relax. Relax the body, relax the mind, relax. Find the breath. If you feel like you need to stay in Shavasana for longer, you're welcome to just listen to my closing words. And if you're ready to move on, you can start to move the fingers and toes, the ankles and wrists. 
Maybe gliding the thumb across the fingertips. Maybe moving the head slightly side to side. Taking a nice deep breath to invigorate the body. And then carefully, gently opening the eyes and pressing into the ground with the right hand, moving the pillows and blanket, pressing into the ground with the left hand, and slowly making your way into a comfortable seated position, however you like best. So as you find yourself in a seated position, Gently close the eyes, palms together, thumbs into the heart center. We're going to finish the class with the chant of Ma. This universal sound of mother, M-A, Ma. We're going to chant it four times in one breath. Take a deep inhale. Ma, 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 Ma. Gently bowing to the teacher inside of yourself, your inner knowing, your inner intuition, and trusting, trusting that inner voice. Bring the right hand to the heart, left hand to baby. Sending yourself love, kindness, compassion. Sending your baby love, kindness, compassion. Sending all beings love, kindness, compassion. Hands come back together, thumbs into the heart center. Gently open the eyes. Thank you for being here with me today. Many blessings on your journey in growing your baby. Namaste.